We say good evening and welcome to the Body of Christ Church Presents, a live class here on Facebook <clears throat> every Friday evenings, usually around this time. Also being broadcasted on several of our YouTube pages, as well as X. Every Friday evenings around this time, we come and we do these live broadcasts. So the topic that we want to talk about tonight is leaving God because of sufferings, right? So leaving God, leaving the Most High God because of the sufferings that we faced. Some people, you know, um, when they face it, when they come to Christ or come to the Bible saying they want to follow Most High God and His Son, um, you know, we go through things. People go through things. And some people uh, cannot handle that, Right. And what happens is they go back uh, into the world, so to speak. Um, and then they, some people now are start to talk in all these um, blasphemous things, you know, against the Mosai and his son. And not only that, they're going on public places like YouTube, TikTok and those places and stuff like that. And just saying blasphemous things against the Mosai and his word. And we know that during um, these times, you know, things like this would happen because the Bible did prophesy that these things would happen. So we just want to go over a class here looking at these things, you know, just being mindful of it um, that, you know, we're not get get uh, we don't get caught up in these things and just to be aware of what's out there. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in the book of psalms chapter 68 and we're going to read verse 11. we want to establish one thing about the bible right because normally when people uh you know when they start speaking blasphemous words or whatever they, they they start by criticizing the bible by criticizing the book right they don't criticize no other book but the Bible, the Quran is not criticized. Books that people wrote about the Bible is not criticized, but the Bible is what's criticized, right? So let's start in the book of Psalms chapter 68, and we're going to read verse 11. And we're just going to, we're going to look at this here and see. This is the book of Psalm 68 and verse 11. It says, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So the Lord gave the word, right? And great was the company of those that published it. When you read the Bible, right? There is absolutely no way that man could have written it. It's so complex and like intricated for lack of better words, right? That no man could have written these things, right? So it's the it's a higher power. It's the most high God who gave the word to men to write in what's known today as the Bible, what we have collectively co collectively today known as the Bible, right? And it's the only book that has been proven to be right over and over and over and over again right even if people want to criticize and they say this and say that even like the show that we did last week about um a dangerous sin that's spreading right and the guy went in and he was talking to this necromancer this witch and he was explaining to her that look have you heard of the dead sea scrolls and she was like yeah she's heard of it but she hasn't read it and he was explaining to her that this was a document that was written like well over 2000 years ago and it's very it's identical to what we have today known as the bible the words are the same right so god has preserved his word right despite different translations and whatnot so people can say this and say that right the most high god the power that's above he's the one that gave the word and then he uses men as instruments to write it and i like that analogy that the guy used last week when he says 
who would you say write a book if i write a book would you say i wrote the book or the pen wrote the book and the lady said well you wrote the book yeah and that's what it is god uses men so you can say we are his penmanship or his pen he uses us to write down the holy scriptures the words right but it's the only book that has been proven right and when you look at it you know there's something to it because people they don't criticize any other book but the bible there's a reason for that right because that's the only book that's been proven right from time to time right so <clears throat> let's move on from there to psalms 33 and we're going to read verse 4 and verse 5 So Psalms 33, we're going to read verse 4 and verse 5. Let's see what this says. Psalms 33 and 4. It says, for the Lord, I'm sorry, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loved righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Okay, so... It says, for the word of the Lord is right. So God's words are right. What he told us to do, to live, the things that he told us would happen in our lives, it's right. It's the only thing that is right. Right? He told us that we're going to go through things in this life. And he's right. He was right about that. We all go through things. But he said that in his word, right? So the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth. So everything he did, it's according to the commandments, right? So that's the word of the Lord, right? It says, he loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. So the Lord loveth righteousness and judgment and the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Do you even know or even consider, right, that this world that we're living in is so polluted, is so evil, is so corrupted, that it's the Lord God that's even keeping us alive and breathing. The water that we all drink, it's crap, right? That even that is polluted. It's the Lord God and his mercy while we're even still alive. Right? When people don't even think about very simple things like that. I was looking at a news report the other day where they were talking about the FAA, right? And they oversee like the airplanes at the airports and stuff like that with the landings and stuff like that. And the study was like, um, you know, they found a, a lot of people, they found a lot of the, um, I forgot their, the air traffic controllers or whatever. A lot of them be falling asleep on the job. Hmm. Do you know how dangerous that is? So who's the one that prevents airplanes and all that stuff from colliding into one another? The Lord God and his son. That's it. Do you know all the pollution that's around us that we can die from? Right? So it's the Lord God and his mercy that's uh, holding us up. That's why it says the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord, despite what we go through, right? The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. And that's what people have to understand, right? It's Satan and his demons that are the ones that are evil and running around telling us that the most high God, he's the one that's evil. That's the same trick he pulled in the garden. All right. So this is what I want to do. I'm going to play a video, right? That led me to doing this class. It's, uh, I guess you can say it's a viral video because I've seen it now on a couple of different platforms, whatever, where people are um, looking at it and then, you know, giving their opinion on it, so on and so forth. And I tried to find the video itself without 
someone you know um talking or whatever over it but i wasn't able to i guess the guy took it down but i'm going to play it right and this guy is an ex-pastor right that is um he came out and he's speaking all these things against the most high god right some very uh blasphemous words um and i was sitting there just almost like scared for the man right um when i was looking at the video cuz i'm like oh my god i'm like i was not wishing death on anything on him or anybody like that but i was literally sitting there shocked and i was like yo i at, at any moment a lightning bolt could come out the sky right and just strike this man dead but that scripture that we just read, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. This is an example of it, right? But these are the things that are happening now in these times where Satan is running around and he's getting a lot of people. And this man is included in it, unfortunately, right? So a lot of y'all out there, y'all probably know this guy here, Nick, Nick Jones. Um, I just want to give him credit. Uh, I first saw this video from his channel, right? So this is not our channel. This is Nick Jones, um, a lot of y'all know him. His videos are pretty popular, right? So I'm going to play the video and um, and then I'll get back to it. But this is what led me to doing this class here. So this guy is an ex-pastor, right? He used to be a pastor. Now he's coming out saying, you know, we shouldn't be following Christ in the Bible. So let's see. Earth, Y'all ain't seen nothing. Y'all ain't seen nothing. But anyway, somebody sent me this video. Shout out to you. Let's get into the video. I'm going to try to keep myself calm, cool, collected, but I can't guarantee that. I'm already kind of amped up. So let's go. Yes, I am angry. I'm angry because I lived a lie for 15 years and I believed it with all my heart. I separated myself from my family, friends. I moved, relocated, disassociated myself from everyone or anyone who was not saved. I believe that I could not be unequally yoked together with non-believers. So I turned my back on good people or people who needed me. But it was for the cross's sake, right? It was for the cross's sake. Rather than fearing men, I feared the one who can cast both soul and body in that someplace called hell. I took hook, line, and sinker, the false story of love called John 316. That's no message of love. That's a message of coercion. Twisting your arm behind your back is a message with the ultimate threat on the end of it. While it says, oh, if you believe, you'll get some cake. But if you don't, I'll burn you. Let me tell you something, every believer. Yeah, I'm mad because I care more about people than your God. It is just a book. It ain't real. The God of the Bible is the devil of the Bible. I don't say that to be mean. I say that because it's a fact. It ain't no such thing as a devil. I'm just using the terms that you're familiar with. It was the God of the Bible that drowned people. It was the God of the Bible that sent animals out of the woods to destroy children. It was the God of the Bible who chose to unalive all the firstborn in Egypt, even the slaves and even the firstborn of the cattle. It was the maniacal God of the Bible that did that. And then intimidating you and I so much to the degree that we would see the wickedness of the character Yahweh in the Bible and deny it and say, no, no, he wasn't wicked. No, it really is our fault. It's us. It's us. No, it's not. Do you know how many people are on the brink of suicide or have committed suicide because they battle within themselves, wondering why a loving God made them the way that they uh, that he did. But yet, uh, because of how they were taught, God, you in your own word condemned me and you made me this way. Do you know how many people are miserable and terrified of the monster in the closet? They can't live their life because they fear that this wicked beast is going to destroy them because they won't find him while he's playing hide and seek. While there's no evidence that he even exists or if it's a he, it, she, they, them. We don't know. But keep in mind, this proverbial God is the one that created you and I this way. And then said... The writers, rather, said in the book that he established the end from the beginning, that none of this is done outside of his will. So here's what I want to say. 
First of all, it's all you beautiful people out there. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You wasn't born in no sin, shaped in no iniquity with some death sentence on you simply because you were born. If a programmer developed a piece of software that had a virus, we would think something was wrong with that developer if we saw them going crazy over the software and stomping it, jumping up and down, like saying, you know, saying, what's wrong with you software? What's wrong with you? You're gonna burn for this. We would think that person was crazy. You see it now, right? You beautiful person who might be gay or whatever, ain't nothing wrong with you. You live your life and you're a beautiful person. It is the Abrahamic religion that makes us mistreat people. You're great people, you're wonderful people. We just simply believe the book and please forgive us, forgive me, because I was the same. I was the same, I was homophobic like many black men while having loved ones who were gay. How dare you? I will be damned and refuse to lift my hands up for any idea of any type of God that would make me in sin, whatever the hell that is, make me worthy of death. And then tell me if I don't find him in the midst of all of these claimed fictitious ideas called gods, I'm going to burn for eternity. But let me tell you something. If you were real, I ain't nobody's sheep. I ain't nobody's slave. And I'm not scared of you or your idea. So if in fact that God was real, burn me. Because I'd rather be with the people, the real ones. I'll stand with them. Burn me. You want to burn me because I love more than you? That's what I would say. Do it. Because I ain't nobody's punk. And you ain't going to threaten me. And don't let nobody threaten you. For all of huh. Let me just say this. I don't want what he got. That is a broken man. I don't want what he got. That man is broken. All right. So you heard that. Yeah. And that was a lot. Go go ahead, brother. Go ahead. No, nah, I just said yeah, because this man. The sad thing is, is like you said, he's broken, and it always stems around like, because you, you see, he used the example of people being gay, this, that, and the other. It always stems around what we can and what we cannot do, exactly. and a lot of people have that problem when it comes to because the Lord, He's not um, forcing you to serve Him. But like the scripture says, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. So the very things that you're used to doing, you got to get those things up. And he got a miss, like a misunderstanding of the scriptures. Like, yes, yeah, true enough. The scriptures tell you about don't be unevenly yoked together with non-believers. But it's letting you know that for a purpose and a reason. It's not saying that you can't be around people. Now, say, for instance, you just coming into the faith and you were struggling with a situation where you uh, were like, you use example, hom um, homosexual or you you um, you did certain things in the world. that just wasn't right. Now, if you claim to want to serve the Lord, you want to change your ways. You can't be yoked up together with people that's going to continue to do the very thing that you're trying to get rid of. So this is what he don't, you don't, the Lord didn't just say put people away. That's how cults are formed. Cults tell you to just cut everybody off. No, the scriptures talk about how we supposed to cut off those. Like if it's somebody that's a stumbling block in my life, if somebody can lead me to sin where I'm having a struggle, if you, know, you say they, they, they was um, homophobic or lesbian, and you keep hanging around the same people, they're going to lead you and keep you in the same state that you're in if you want to change. You cut those people off. Like with me, I always use my example of smoking weed. In the beginning, when I was coming to serve the Lord, I had to cut myself off from people that smoke weed because if I didn't, I would have continued to smoke weed. But now as years went on, and I've been in this thing for years and years, now I'm strong enough to go right back around those same people that smoke weed and not saying I'm going around them to um because I want to smoke weed, but I'm strong with them now. They don't have an influence on me. And I also let my light shine around people like that. I don't just cut myself off and cut myself off from the world and just 
isolate yourself. But when you understand and know the, the true wickedness that lies in, in man, when he's not in the will of the Heavenly Father, you do have to be careful because people carry spirits. And this thing is very spiritual that a lot of people don't know and understand. And spirits like to transfer. And especially if you if you call yourself walking in God, spirits definitely like to get jump off other people and onto you to hinder your walk and your step. So I'll be able with that for right now, but it's it's more that I say. But go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's um it, it, it definitely is a sad thing, and I tell you, um to be honest, the first time I saw the video, I was like scared stiff in my seat watching it especially when he says you know oh burn me burn me right now i'm like oh my god and honestly you know there were quite a few people in the comments that were saying yo y'all need to pray for this man and i did i don't even know him because i'm like i you know what i don't know what happened in this background i don't know if he got hurt by some so-called church people I don't, I don't know i don't know if he was in a cult or whatever it is right but it's very unfortunate because it's things like this that's happening quite a bit now. And we went over a show recently where we talked about what happens after we, re we repent. Mm -hmm. And I did play a similar video at the very beginning that was very similar. And I'm going to play another video and look at some comments from people that are actually agreeing. Right? So it's these things that are happening right now when people are coming to the Bible, coming to the faith and all that, and Satan is mad and upset, and he's just working and working and working until he pulls them back out, right? And these are the things that, you know, we got to be mindful of and we got to pay attention to, right? And I'm glad you explained those things, like some of the scriptures that he misunderstands about um, being not yoked up together with unbelievers, so on and so forth, right? Yeah. Here, let, me say, let me say this real quick, too, because I want to do, I did forget to speak on that, because about the he uh, want the Lord if you real let me burn see understand and know this people a lot of times but one like even the brother said you you do we see that a lot in movies when people get to speaking against God and stuff boom a lightning bolt hit them but tell you the truth God really don't act in that way because the Lord already knew you know, the Lord know your beginning and your end so the Lord already know what path this man was going to be on what he was going to say about him that's one thing. But a lot of times people, when you're um when you're struggling and you're caught up in your sins and you're not um abstaining from like the fleshly man or trying to really walk with God, a lot of times you can't tap into God. So him pretty much taunting God to get him to try to get a reaction he wants to know if god real and god having revealed himself to him because obviously somewhere he's caught up in some type of sin that blinded him so it's a lot of people that like that they do they just go headlong into sin and then they and they like because something happened in their path and, and they got cut off and, and a lot of times it's it could be the death of the of a loved one mother father child because any of those things that when them things happen, a lot of people just lose their faith. They lose everything when it comes to God. And Satan comes in and totally smother and blinds them. So, yes, it, it, he definitely needs to be prayed for. But it's just a way that people like people speak out. And so like he right now in his mind, he believes that he's just right. So now. Like he said, I ain't no punk, and I ain't no man. Come on, man, listen. What what does being a punk got to do with serving God? Or you? He and he said he loves <laughs> more than God. It's no, it's that's impossible because we are corruptible, wicked, evil beings. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be able to really do anything. But it can be very, very, very difficult. When we clash and, and we don't clean up on life and figure out and, and 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 know what it is that the Lord wants us to do, Satan all we talk about this all the time. Satan gets in, and we got doorways. And a lot of times, whether you know or you don't know, it doesn't matter. Satan, like we always used to say, a thief. If you left your window up and you was in a safe as you was in a neighborhood and you didn't know that the neighborhood was like a high theft neighborhood. 
They and you just moved in and you left your window up for the first time. They be like, oh, they just moved in. You know, I ain't gonna get them. No, they gonna get you if they thieves. That's how Satan is. If you give him an opportunity to get in, he's going to get in. And my point in saying that is somewhere in this man's life, Satan got in and started putting the blinders on him into where he started leading him in this path to where now there is no God. He said, he said, there ain't even no devil. And a lot of the people that's like that, they said they don't believe in a God or a devil. It's just like, we just, you might as well go believe in the big bang theory. Then we just boom, just came out of existence. And I don't know what he's dealing with. But I guarantee you, if you follow this man later on down the line, it's going to be some new age, higher self. We are God's experience, this, that, and the other. You got to get to your higher self. And because that's where everybody go. That's where everybody go. But pretty much that's a cry out to God when he said, burn me. This, it, it's just a cry out to get God to move and respond to him so that he will see the thing like, oh, now I can see that there's a God because he wants to, he's trying to try God. We can't try God. You're not going to move God like that. That's what the devil do every day. That's why there's so much wickedness and evilness and so much, so many things that the devil is doing on this earth. He is trying to move God out of the order that God's going to move. God's going to move in the order he is and things are going to go the way he wanted to go. No matter how chaotic and corrupt things get, a lot of it is we always say is man's free will how why we go outside and do the things that we do and the scripture says i said before you this day life and death good and evil stretch forth thy hand to which one you want and that's a, your choice and i yield with that bro exactly let's go to the book of first timothy chapter four and we're going to read verse one and verse two because you know these these are the things man that are happening now in these times you know where people people are doing these things you know um and the scriptures did warn us about this so we're gonna you know we're gonna go through the scriptures and like i said just look at some of the things that it prophesied about what we should be doing to avoid you know a scenario like that and just what 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 we're up against what the battle is so let's read first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and verse 2 1 Timothy 4 and 1 says, Now the Spirit speak expressively, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of death, speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now it says, The Spirit speaketh expressly. Right. So the spirit speaks plainly, boldly. Right. That in the latter time. So in the last days, which is now that we're living in, some people are going to depart from the true faith of Christ. Right. That true faith of Christ, just going through the things that we got to go through to refine ourselves, to get better, not wanting to fulfill our lust, but denying our flesh, killing our flesh daily. Right. Some people are going to depart from that and they're going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, those are the demonic spirits that are against the Most High God. Those are the condemned spirits. Those are the spirits that will be destroyed in the lake of fire. They are against God. Right. Because that was pronounced on them. Right. That has not happened as yet. Right. So they are in the earth working under their principal leader, which is Satan. Right. And those are the ones that are telling us, F God, F this, F that. It burned me and this and that and the other and all kinds of stuff. Right. It's those are demonic spirits. And this is what the scriptures tell us, tell us what happened. That in the last days, some people are going to leave the true faith and they're going to give heed to these things, right? It says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, which is what he was speaking, a lot of lies, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron, right? So conscience seared with the hot iron, our minds is just gone, is, is, is given over, right, to the evil one. And that's what it appears with this guy. Right. His conscience has been given over to Satan. 
right? It's seared with a hot iron. He's very passionate about how he feels. Very passionate, very emotional about how he feels. And not only that, he's going on platforms now like TikTok and uh, spreading the word, spreading how he's, he's feeling and telling other people that are following Christ not to follow Christ. This is what he's doing, right? So the scriptures, again, it did tell us that these things would happen, right? And this is what we got to be mindful of and be careful of, right? Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we're going to read verse 15. This is also a part of the problem, right? Um, let's read this before I even say anything. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, let's read this. 2 Timothy 2, 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So it's, it's, it's telling us to study, to show ourself approved unto God, right? So the problem in a lot of cases with people is people follow men they do not pick up the bible and read for themselves or they go by the way how someone explains a scripture explains the bible to them and we're not supposed to do that because if you do that that's when you're going to be tricked and you're going to be fooled and you're going to end up in a world of hurt we've even seen that in our own experience with these different splits we've seen that and what was the problem? The prob one of the problems was people weren't studying the Bible for themselves. They were just going to the Sabbath service or whatever every week, just sitting there listening to a man. That's all they were doing. And that's a big problem. If you continue to do that, right, you will fall into Satan's trap. You will go into your own lust and your own mind because you're not picking up the Bible right and going from precept to precept to understand say okay is this really saying what this pastor or what this elder or bishop or whomever is saying it is like i always say on these shows right to this day i do not take anybody's words for nothing i won't argue right people will come to me and say hey this our teacher class i will not interrupt the class i will not argue i will not Go back and forth with a brother or sister. I won't do it. I will go back and I'll look at the scriptures for myself and I'll do what I'm seeing it saying it soon. But I'm not going to do it because this is what somebody's telling me to do. And that's not rebellion, right? This is what we all have to do, right? And not follow men because people come with their own interpretation of things and their own lust. And that's a big part of the problem. You're not studying the scriptures for yourself and going from precept to precept. Saying, okay, you know what? When the scripture says, don't be yoked up with, you know, um, unbelievers, this and that and the other. You know what? When you read this in its full context, it will tell you that this church here in Galatia, they had all kinds of idols and all kinds of stuff around them. People into all kinds of lasciviousness and all that stuff, right? So how is that going to be? Uh, serving idols and stuff. How's that going to be when you're coming into Christ and then you're still hanging out with people that are partaking in these in this stuff, right? It's like you're a part of it. And again, not saying you're cutting them off like the brother said earlier. No, you're not doing that, right? It's just that you're not going to run into the same places with them, so to speak, right? But you will get that understanding when you actually read, study, to study the scriptures for yourself, you will get that understanding, right? And pray to the Lord for understanding and for his Holy Spirit, because that's what really reveals the scriptures unto us, right? Pray for that. Do the little command, the, um, the little amount that you do know of what he says, and you will get that understanding. You People won't be able to trick or fool you. And you never, ever want to take anybody's words for anything. So that's what we have to do is to study the scriptures, right? Let's look at an example of people that did this. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 17. 
And we're going to read verse 10 and verse 11. And we're going to see. Right? So Acts chapter 17, verse 10. So study to show thyself approved unto God, you know, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly. If you study, right, and you study uh, on your own and you don't have any kind of lust or whatever that you want to fulfill, you will be able to rightly divide the word of truth. You will know what it's saying, right? So let's read Acts 17, verse 10 and 11. Acts 17, 10. And the brother, I'm sorry, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night to Berea whom coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Now check this out, right? Now the apostle Paul was uh, a highly revered uh, person as far as him knowing the scriptures, you know, so on and so forth, right? And he was going around and preaching the gospel. So he was well known. He was known, right? That this is a brother that's sharp. But yet and still it says, um, when he came into this synagogue here of the Jews, because back then they had synagogues or whatever, like today you want to call it churches or whatever, where, the, where they met, Right? It says these were more noble, right, than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. So they weren't rebellious to it, right? They're all not. That's not what they're saying. Oh, that book was written by men. That's not saying that. They weren't like that. They were. They received it with readiness of mind. So their mind was right to receive it, right? They had the right mindset. But not only that. They searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So they're not, they said, look, Paul, I'm not going to believe you and what you're telling. I'm going to, we're going to search the scriptures daily. We're going to look to see, is it really how you are explaining it? Is that really the case? Because you know, the one thing that I always say is that this Bible, these words have been around for decades and centuries. And people have come and used it for their own purpose, nefarious purposes. People have been doing that since it was it was being written down. Forever, for centuries. This Bible has been around for centuries, right? And people have been using it to corrupt people, right? Putting their own twist, their own spin to it. Right? This has been going on for years decade for centuries for a millennia that's why you never ever want to take somebody's word for it or how the person explained the scripture to you saying this is what it means you should pick up the bible and study it and a good way of doing that is whatever scripture that the person gives let's say as an example they say, okay, well, Acts 17 and 11 is saying X, Y, Z, right? Okay, when you go back and search the scriptures daily to see whether it was so, start from verse 1 in Acts 17 and read throughout that entire chapter. That should give you more context to what that particular uh, verse is saying, right? That's a good way to not be tricked. Right. And that's a way to go back and to search the scriptures daily. But you don't want to take somebody's word for it. Right. Or just sit there and just listen. You're going to whatever church you're going to and you're just sitting back listening. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I believe because this person is charismatic or he seems like he knows a lot of scriptures. I'm telling you, this scripture, these by this Bible here, it's been around for a long time. And a lot of people have come and they've tried to corrupt it. And they've corrupted people with it. Right? We've all seen that. Right? That's why it's very important, again, to study on your own. To see what the scriptures is really saying. And not be having all these different lusts or things in your mind that you want to do. But being a, of a humble mindset 
to say, you know what? I'm ready to do what the Lord tells me to do. And I'm going to read the scriptures and see what it says. All right. So what we're going to do is, so that's the studying part. Let's go to John 16 and 33, right? And we're going to see what our Lord and Savior, something that he told us, right? Because this is a, another part of the problem that we're running into. So John 16 and 33, we're going to read that and see. This is the book of John 16, verse 33. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So these things... I have spoken unto you. So this is Jesus Christ himself talking, right? And he's talking to his disciples, um, you know, before he's, uh, um, or right when he's about to be put to death, right? And leave them, right? So he's telling them that, look, I'm telling you these things um, that you might have peace. Why? Because in the world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to go through things. Right. But he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Christ also went through a lot of things. Right. But he was able to overcome those things. So he was able to win. Right. And not give in to Satan or any of his device devices and lose. Right. So that's the encouragement that he's telling his disciples at the time. And it's written down. So he's also telling us in these times, these things as well. Be of good cheer. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. So when you come to the scriptures, when you come to say, you know, you're going to follow the Most High, you're going to follow Christ, you're going to follow Yahweh or whatever name you want to use, right? You are going to go through things. We all go through things, right? But when we look, we should look to Christ to see, okay, he won at the end of the day he won the battle and if he won so can we that should be the inspiration right but we're gonna go through things right because that's another reason why a lot of people are leaving leaving the most high and saying oh man the hell with all of this so <clears throat> this is what i want to do i want to play um another video and I believe this is the same guy. If not, it's another ex-pastor, but I guess he's using a different name or whatever on here. But I think this is him. I'm not sure. But anyway, if it's not, it's another um, ex-pastor, right? Um, that's just, you know, talking foolishness. And, and this is the part where I'm going to read some of the comments, right? So... You see the caption, Christianity is a religion of suffering, right? So let's hear what he's got to say. Christianity is not a religion of hope. It's not a religion of help. It's not a religion where you can find this rest and this peace and this comfort. No, quite often Christianity is a religion where you suffer. You have to suffer for your faith and suffer for your love of God and you have to go through trials and tribulations and your faith has to be tested. It's a religion of suffering. Think about the earliest church leaders, I'll call them, the, the you know, those apostles after Jesus. Think about them. Think about Paul. Read your Bible. You, you'll read it all throughout the New Testament, how it's just it's, it's, it's littered with story after story after story of people suffering. If you don't know Christian history, let me take you back a little bit. Those earliest Christians suffered greatly, martyr after martyr after martyr. Well, people may not be martyred today, especially here in the U.S., but people are still suffering. I mean, it's all around you. Have you listened to many of the Christian songs about how you're fighting the good fight and you're suffering for the Lord and you're waiting on the Lord and how the devil is attacking and da-da-da-da-da? Many Christians 
often talk about how, you know, you, you, you got to suffer through and you got to hold on and you got to fight through. And yes, things are hard and yes, things are tough and yes, things are, are you know, difficult. And yes, you're being attacked and da, 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 da. But you got to hold on to the faith. Christianity, it's not a religion of hope. It's not a religion of help. It's religion that conditions one to believe that suffering is necessary. Who is the poster boy of Christianity? Jesus. How did his story end? And I'm not talking about the being ascended up into heaven. I'm talking about how did it end? You know, before the ascension, the suffering. Hmm? So Christianity is not a religion of hope. Again, it conditions you to believe you must suffer and you will suffer. All right. This is what I want to do, right? Let me read some of the comments. It says, one says, you were a Christian, but you never had a relationship with God. That's why you don't understand. I pray for you. All right. Um, this one person says it is very fear based as well. This other person, man, I love your content. You say the exact things I've thought of for years. Another person. I agree, brother. My suffering started when I was forced to be baptized. All right. Um, another person, you are so right. Um, another person, great word today. Teach them, my brother. I, I agree with you. Um, I know a lot of people like that. Sad, sad, sad. Please be encouraged, my brother, to continue. I support you. Great message if you get it. Truth. All right? Facts. So, as we can see, right, there's quite a few people that have that belief, right, about just the sufferings and the things that they go through, and it's a false religion, it's not a religion of hope and this and that and the other and so on and so forth, right, which is crazy. But go ahead with your thoughts before I move on. Well, I'll say this, because, like, uh, I'm really wondering, like, what he expect, like, because whether you in the Bible or whether you serve the Lord, this world, you're going to suffer, period. Exactly. That's what he's trying to get to. But what I really believe he's saying is, is suffering because he's battling the denying of the flesh, because it's mm. true, yes. The denying of our flesh it can be very you will suffer especially if you if you want to fulfill the lust of your flesh if you want to do what you want to do if you want to sin because like i said earlier, when you come to serve the lord you got to prepare yourself for temptation you got you can't do what you will just like you just can't like and it's all like understand this you know people wants to serve god but still live in this world and a lot of men, like what he's dealing with, they have this problem because it is, it's like when it comes to the Lord, I go here, uh, Hebrews, bro. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, in verse 12. I'll show, like, because th this is what the word of the uh, Lord does. This is uh, I'll read Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sights but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him of him with whom 
we have to do. So understand and know when it's when it comes to the word of God, it cuts deep, it all your attentions, all your emotions, all your thoughts, everything that you want to do, the Lord cut it and slice in the hand and show you that no, that's not it. You can't do this, you can't do that. And it seemed like it's what a, a book, like they always say, a book of rules and regulations. But that's when you combine and say add anything to that like the world be like that if you go to to a police academy there's do's and don'ts this is you can't do this you can't do that you got to learn the structure of what it is that you got to do to fulfill to be a police officer so now when it comes from leaving this world to serving god it's structure it's denying of the flesh and a lot of people does do not have that mentality to carry on because they want to give in to their flesh. They want to do the things that their fleshly appetites want them to do, pretty much. And this is what it seems like this guy is struggling with because he don't want like the suffer. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what suffering is he doing. Like, what you what suffering is he doing? Like. Because like when you do read through other scriptures, we suffer for righteousness sake because now we're living in the world that does not know. You got a lot of evil and wicked people. You got people that will just cuss you out. You got people that do you wrong. You got people that are, just don't like your presence and will treat you a certain way. Now, if you are serving the Lord and somebody's doing wrong to you, the Lord teaches you and shows you how to respond to those situations. But if you live in this world, this world teaches you how to respond to that situation too. It's called what? Revenge, retaliation, getting back. Now, he might be feel like since if somebody did him wrong, oh, the Bible said you can't do this, you can't do that. So now he's condemned within himself because he feel a certain way about how someone's treating him. But it's, it's always a way to deal with certain with situations. Me and his brother talk about it all the time. And yes, it's very tempting to go and do what you want to do in, a, in your flesh. But if you understand and know that many times that you did what you felt like doing, look at the end results of it. Mm. Look at the end results. And a lot of people, they see that. They end up in the world of trouble. You got people sitting behind bars right now 20, 40, 50 years for a split decision that they made out of anger. But the scripture teach you how to channel and direct your anger and not give over to your anger. But see now, I'm suffering because I can't be angry. Oh, I'm suffering because I can't lay down with this woman to keep giving me the eye. I know she want me. So, oh, I'm, I know she want me. Oh, I'm suffering because I can't smoke a cigarette when I want to. Oh, I'm suffering because I can't do whatever it is that you feel that you need to do. This uh, when you really look into, if you continue on the path and do certain things that God say abstain yourself from. If you look at the track record and the history of people that continue to do it, look at their lives. And people just don't. It's like we don't want to come under the structure of God. I said this before, right now, this world right now tonight can change if everybody just said, all right, I'm going to love my neighbors, I love myself. This whole entire world would change overnight. But no, it's all about get yours. You got this, this wicked, evil set up, this government that's just pumping and draining the people dry. But what God, they don't, what God they serve? What 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 power do they serve? They they get got them to where they poisoning our food, the air we breathe, the water we drink. What is causing these people to do that? Because they can do what they they want to do. They they can live their life. They don't serve the Lord because like if they love their neighbors, they love themselves. They won't be pumping fluoride water and chemtrails all into the air, pumping these things into your children as infants and all this crazy stuff that's going on in this world see people don't think about that you start thinking about how wicked god is because you can't do your own wickedness mm. and, and that's simply what it be 
Yep. And uh, listen, and it, the thing is, the crazy thing is, I understand where this dude coming from because I know what he wants to do. <laughs> I, <laughs> I done been there to where you you upset because you can't fulfill your lust. My, I always talk about my lust. My lust is weed and smoking. If I, if I had my choice, I would be smoking weed and cigarettes and cigar every time, have, sipping me some cognac and having me a cigar. That that is my pleasure. But the long term effects of that is what it breaks down your body. It's destroying your temple. It's not it's not good for you. You got people that's straight up addicted to food. If you look at the, the, the size of all people now in this world, it's everybody is overweight and this, that, nothing because they got an addiction to food. And gluttony is one of the sins. It's a great sin because you can literally eat, overeat. These are the things that, and it, it, it's all the Lord is just trying to show you how to abstain from fleshly lust. And, and that's what we had. That's that's second Peter. I mean, that's first Peter too. Abstain from fleshly lust. We got to abstain from the fleshly desires and the corner of lust because this is why I said earlier about how Satan got in this guy because he's battling with his lust. And once Satan get in, he start blinding you, corrupting you. How did Satan deceive a third of the heavenly host because he got into their head and showed them how evil? The God of the Bible is. So now, if this God is so evil, or say, you know, like you have, you got, you know, the, the people that believe that Satan was the one that brought in knowledge to man, this, that, another. Okay, then if God is so evil and he's all powerful, what would we be able to do about it anyway? Like, it's like they always call God evil, but if he's this great evil God, and he got all his power and can't nobody stop him, then we doom. If you if you really look at it, then we doom under a God that got all the power he created and he's evil. He they always go to the part where he killed he killed children, he, he sent animals. But do, do, do if you really understand and knew why these things happened and what these people were doing in these lands and why they were commanded to these things to happen, you will see why. You will you will understand why. What if I pull up on your 15 year old son and I start just teaching him all kind of debauchery, all type of how to get over this, how to rob banks, how to just screw women every time he want. I give him knowledge and understanding on how to get over on this. I give him knowledge and understanding how to get over on you as a parent, how to get what he wants. And I'm teaching him all this stuff and I'm giving him the game and I'm showing him things, all this craziness. How much would you really like me? See, that's what it was in these different lands. They were doing such wickedness that these people, they, you just, you got to go. You Y'all just got to go. Ain't no reforming, ain't no changing. Because once a person man made up, they man made up. If you want to do what you want to do, then you're going to do what you're going to do. Just like Satan, like the brother said earlier, these spirits, these wicked forces, they are, they've been from the beginning waiting on their judgment. Do you know how insane these creatures are? That's why they have no remorse for humanity because they are waiting their judgment and they know ain't no redemption for them. So when you have heard, you, you ain't got nothing to lose. You ain't got nothing to lose. So they going to do whatever it is. And remember, these beings been around from the beginning and they got knowledge and understanding on each generation of the generation of how people act. They know how to adapt. They know how to adjust. They know how to do this, know how to do that. That's why we have to arm ourselves. This is why the Lord shows you why you have to be so like restrained from doing this and doing that. Because if you give the enemy any opportunity to get in and he'll get in and corrupt and destroy something that's beautiful for one like a marriage a man and a woman coming together and it's a good couple satan wants to destroy it the second he get in the head of the man or the woman he'll destroy something that was good that's how the enemy works 
but it comes through what sin desire what you tap yourself in the people that you around you can have uh you can have like i'm using the example of marriage you can have a, a woman that's um a, um jealous of your marriage or vice versa a man is jealous and he get into the head of the man or vice versa a woman get into the head of the woman and start telling you all negative things about your significant other or your spouse and if you believe it then what she can, the devil was working through her to do what destroy your marriage but now that's why i says don't be unevenly yoked together with non-believe people that don't understand the scripture because you can get poisoned by people that don't understand because the words and, and the way people phrase things if you, if a person can get you to yield it's almost like say for instance you have a perfectly good cup of water and somebody just drop in just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and it just contaminate the whole, and it spread. That's how, like, when, when things get into your mind, that's why you got to guard your mind. It can contaminate it. Somebody can come to you and bring a lie about somebody else, and if you, if you yield and think about it, it can give you a whole different impression about a person that you know that's good. You'll be looking at them, you'll be looking at them sideways off a lot. And that's that's your boy Satan 101. That's his whole scheme and trick. He always try to pollute and destroy the greatness and the wonderfulness of the most high God and Christ his son. And I yield with that, bro. Exactly, bro. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over um some of those scriptures or some of those things that you quoted. We're gonna look at the scriptures. We're going to go into the Apocrypha and we're going to go to the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter two. And we're going to start there in verse one. And I always give an intro of the Apocrypha um, for people who don't know. OK, the Apocrypha um, is a part of the Bible. It was included in the original 1611 version of it. They later took it out. However, it is still a part of the Bible. You can get it online or you can get it, you know, still in a um, hardcover uh, copy right but this is in the apocrypha so we're going to read ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and we're going to read verse 1 um just looking at when we come to serve christ when we come to serve the lord the things that's going to happen right and why uh so ecclesiasticus chapter 2 verse 1 let's read that ecclesiastes 2 and 1 says my son if thou come to serve the lord prepare thy soul for temptation so the scriptures is telling us that look if you come to serve the lord prepare your soul for temptation what's the temptation the things in us that we want to do and fulfill it could be anger right somebody could be just pissing you off and you're just getting tempted and tempted to punch them in the face because that's what you're used to doing but now in the lord in christ now you know you might read the scriptures hey anger resteth in the bosom of fools that's not how we should be so now that temptation is going to come because we're we're fighting a spiritual war the scriptures tell us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers so meaning demons demonic spirits right so we're fighting against that and we're also fighting against our flesh because that's our natural makeup right so but it's telling us to be prepared for things like that when we come to serve the lord right what else should we do read verse two verse two it says set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble so set thy heart aright right so your mind right set that right and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble so that making haste in time of trouble is you doing things according to your own mind you say man forget the scriptures you know i don't want to wait on the lord or whatever it is if you prayed in that situation or whatever and you just want to handle things your way right that's that making haste right give it up when you're suffering what's that I said, and giving up when you're suffering. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, bro. Giving up while you're suffering. Like, in a lot of these examples, like what we're seeing. 
and in, 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 in what a lot of people are now doing, right? They're coming to the Lord and say, man, forget it, man. I lost a lot of friends. Man, you know, I have to give up this. I have to give up. No, I, I can't do it. I'm not doing it. Nah, that's not how we're supposed to be. Read verse 3. Verse 3, it says, Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So cleave unto him. So how do we cleave unto the most high through his son Christ? We cleave unto him by uh, doing the scriptures, by thinking about what he commands us to do in that situation and depart not away, meaning not going into our own minds what we really want to do, right? That thou mayest be increased at thy last, last end so that we can get that strength to endure, right, in whatever things that we're going through, right? And I always, and I, well, not always, but I said this before in that other class that we did about um, what happens after we repent. What I said was, this is a scripture that as far as long as I've been in this doctrine, I still read these scriptures from time to time because I have to remind myself of what these scriptures say, right? And not be going into my own mind, so on and so forth, right? I still have to read these scriptures for myself from time to time to just give myself that reminder right before i go into the or i go into that woe is me spirit and i gotta get out of that so i'll read these scriptures right read verse four and verse five verse four it says whatsoever is brought upon thee take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, right? And it says, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Because that's the thing, right? When you come into the doctrine or come to serve the Lord, a lot of people, a lot of things change for people. Some people might lose their jobs or whatever, like lose their family members. Family members stop, stop talking to them. Man, you 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 serving that Bible? Are you in that religion? Are you in a cult? You this that? You're not hanging out with me no more. You're not going to clubs or this or that. You know, so you lose a lot, right? But it's telling us to be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Be patient because the Lord will see you through, right? The Lord will bring you out of that, right? But there's a reason why. We're going through these things, and there's a reason why all that is happening. It says, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. When we look at a piece of a gold jewelry, right? This all shiny and nice looking and all that, right? It doesn't come out the earth looking like that. It had to go through a refining process, right? in order to get all shiny and glittery and you know something you want to wear and put on right so that's what the most High is doing with us when he's bringing us to this ministry showing us his word showing us his son right he's gonna uh, uh make us go through certain things so that we can reform our ways and become that precious gold in his sight right so that's why we're going through the things that we're going through and when, once we learn to fight and overcome them, right, we become that much better of a person, that much righteous of a person in his sight. We're becoming those fine gold, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that's the process that the Lord is telling us that we're going to go through whenever we come to serve him, right? So this is what people have to understand and not, man, they say, man, F this, F, you know, no, I'm not doing that. I lost a, a lot of family members, a lot of, lost a good job. You know, I lost friends. I lost this. Nah, that's 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 the wrong attitude. Yep. All right. If you want to say anything before we move on, go ahead. Yeah, I speak on like what you just because like a lot of times too, people gotta know and understand too when we leave this carnal state of mind, this world. When the Lord pull us out of this world, the enemy is mad. So like the brother said, I lost my job. I lost friend. 
the enemy can bring in disasters too in your life and it's caused things to start going crazy and chaos in your life as well too but now if you start focusing and thinking that it's god then that's when you start losing the faith and you start separating yourself from god when satan is the one that's doing these things to you because god like you said like god like i said he gonna like the world use example of the fine gold that he's trying to get us to be so the world is an example of the earth meaning the dirt because when you pull gold out of the earth it's dirty crust it's full of everything the same thing with us when the lord pull us out of the world we filthy we dirty we we grimy so the lord had to clean us up and that cleansing is sometimes it can be painful it, depending on how long and how deep people been into the uh, in their sins and when the lord started washing and cleansing these things away we like what is going on and it's it could be a painful process but like the scripture said it says Make not haste in time of trouble. It says, cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Meaning if you keep going through it, when you get to the end, the revelation of it, you're going to see everything that the Lord was doing for you. It's like the old saying, you have a lot of people who say, they, they old grade school teach. I used to hate so-and-so, Mr. Parker. I used to hate Mrs. Adams. But then now you and you in your, your adulthood, you see everything that these men or these women were doing for you, but they seem very harsh and cruel because you didn't understand. And that's what it is with a lot of people. You just don't understand what the Lord is doing. And you in, in all, all corruptible minds, we can't. That's why we got to set our heart right. We got to focus on him. Like the scripture says, we got to cleave to him. Okay, Lord, I don't know what you, I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna keep striving to do what it is that you want me to do. And if you keep carrying on, you fight the enemy. Because remember, the enemy gonna come in and try to destroy it too. You got to know that. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people can't see Satan. When they see crazy things start happening, they just automatically blame God. Automatically blame God. And it's God fault. Everything is God fault. Everything is God fault. But that's the world we live in. And I hear with that, bro. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna continue on here in the um in the book of Ecclesiastes. We're gonna go over to chapter 40. Because you know, you said something that I mean, I asked myself the same question too after I watched the video. I'm like, okay what is he going through or not you, you know because everybody goes through something mm -hmm. and that's just life right but we're gonna we're gonna read here just pay attention to what we're gonna read ecclesiasticus chapter 40 right we're gonna read from verse one down through verse eight but i'm gonna um try to explain it step by step right but this is gonna show us something right so ecclesiasticus chapter 40 let's read verse one first please ask is 40 and one Great travail is created for every man, and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam from the day that they go out from their mother's womb till the day that they return to the mother of all things. <laughs> okay, so, bro, great travail is created for every man or just, just some people? <laughs> every single one of them thank you great travail we all go through things all of us i was just talking to this brother last night telling him some of the stuff i was going through he was telling me some of the stuff he was going through great travail is created for every man everybody goes through things it says and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of adam we all come from Adam, right? From the day that they go out their mother's womb, what's the first thing a baby does when they come out their mother's womb? They cry, right? It says, till the day that they return to the mother of all things, which is the earth, because that's where we're all come from the earth. So from the day we come out of our mother's womb, we come out crying. Until the day that we go, usually when people get, before they die if they do live a long life whatever 
what usually happens some kind of sickness right they're plagued with some kind of sickness and they go out that way and all throughout their life guess what they go through things so this is for everybody everyone goes through these things right let's read verse two verse two their imaginations of things to come and the day day of death troubles their thoughts and cause fear of the heart wow so their imagination of things to come so all of us right we we worry about things that are coming on the earth or things that are about to come some people might be worried about the war going the wars going on right now man is it going to turn break out into world war three some people are, are obsessed with that they watch all kind of youtube videos about it uh listen to the radio or search the internet about all kinds of stuff i mean i even got asked um before hey don't you guys cover um current topics you know because i've been wanting to hear a perspective on the israel gaza war and i told the person i was like well you know the brothers on thursdays they usually you know they've been talking about that stuff but us on fridays we haven't been you know really been covering that right but these are things that people are concerned about. So their imagination of things to come, we, if it's not that, it's something else that people worried about. What's going to happen to my parents? What's going to happen to my job? Blah, blah, blah. Right? So their imagination, imagination of things to come and the day of death, we all worry about dying, all of us, me included. Trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. We're afraid of these things. We're afraid of what's going to happen. We're afraid of dying. Read verse 3. And even Christ himself had fear of the day of death. Exactly, bro. Good point. Exactly. Yep. Verse 3. From him that sitteth on the throne of glory unto him that is honorable in the oh. earth. I'm sorry. Thank you, bro is humble in earth and ashes so it says from him that sitteth on the throne of glory right so even a king even a president today everybody worries about these things look at the president what's the joke that they always say they go in without gray hairs and they come out with a whole bunch of gray hairs <laughs> look at obama <laughs> look at clinton look at all of them right they all go in without no gray hairs <laughs> At the time they come out, their head is full of grace. And this these people have all kinds of people catering to them, right? Cooking food for them, doing this, doing that. They they fulfilling their lust, indulging all kinds of wickedness. But they still go through a lot. It's still a high stress job, right? So and they still go through things. So from the person that sits on the throne to him that is humbled in earth and ashes, even the ones that are poor everybody goes through things everyone right read verse four four for him that is for from him that were a purple and a crown unto him that is clothed with a linen frock frock okay so him that were purple and crown so is again talking about royalty a king royalty. yeah exactly with and so on and so forth right so read verse five verse five wrath and envy trouble and unquietness fear of death and anger and strife and in the time of rest upon his bed his night nice sleep do change his knowledge okay so it says wrath and envy right uh these are things that we all go through we're angry about some envious unquietness it says fear of death again that fear of dying anger somebody pissed us off or anger about something striving and it says and in the time of rest upon his bed his night sleep do change his knowledge so what do we do we go to bed like i know me I, and i <laughs> i know it's not just me i know it's you know it's quite a few people that are like this but one of the things is i usually fear that i'm gonna die in my sleep right <laughs> 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 that be a lot of people bro i'm that serious a lot of times when i go to sleep that's what i'll be thinking about man am i gonna die in my sleep right so 
But these are the things that what a lot of people go through. It says it changes what their their night sleep and do changes knowledge because people be going to sleep with all kinds of stuff on their minds, right? So read verse six. Verse six. It says, a little or nothing is his rest. And afterwards, he is in his sleep. And in the day, I sorry, as in a day of keeping watch, trouble in the vision of his heart. As if it, if, I'm sorry, as if he were escaped out of a battle. So a little or nothing is his rest. Because some people, like I said, their minds just be racing and they thinking about all the worries of the day, all the things that's going to happen, so on and so forth, right? Afterward, he's in his sleep. Afterwards, you just fall asleep. That's, that's, that, that'd be me, right? Afterwards, you're in your sleep, but you'd be thinking about these things before you go to sleep, right? Read verse 7. Verse 7. When all is saved... He awakened and marveled, marveled that the fear was nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> you cannot tell me the Bible. Is not real. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm laughing at myself. Yeah, I, I, I know you're laughing too. But let me just finish this. Go ahead. Go. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm just, I'm just agreeing. Okay. I'm just agreeing. Yeah, because the thing is. I'll go to sleep and like I said I'll be like afraid that I'm gonna die in my sleep but then when I wake up in the morning it's like what this says I marvel at man that fear was nothing I'm good I woke up you know what I'm saying but every night I lay down and said man am I gonna die you know and that's the thing and then I wake up man it was nothing I feel good you know but these are the things that happen right but bro, let's read Here's the key, right? This is why I can't remember. Let's read verse 8. Let's read that. Verse, verse 8. Such thing happen, happening, happening unto all flesh, both man and beast. And that is, I'm sorry, and that is sevenfold more upon sinners. Okay, so it says such things happen unto all flesh. It says even man and beast. Like mm -hmm. some of y'all that have dogs, right? If you ever notice, like when your dog is sleeping, sometimes your dog will like wake up. Ugh! You know, it's like all frightened because they're dreaming. Mm -hmm. Right. So even the animals. Right. But it says such things happen unto all flesh. Right. Eat man and beast. But it's, here's the point. It says sevenfold more upon sinners. So when that guy and other people say things like, oh, I go through a lot of, you go through a lot of persecution, a lot of things, you know, when you start to follow God, so on and so forth, everyone goes through things. But here's the thing. It's even sevenfold more upon people that are sinful in the eyes of the Lord, right? Because they have no hope. So that video, when he falsely stated, oh, all, all it can give you is hope. Yeah. And that hope is real. Right, because once you're in the scriptures, you know that okay, this these things is just it's nothing, it's real. We all go through things and we have to strive, meaning fight to be better in the eyes of the Lord. But the sinner, they don't have this knowledge, they don't they don't know any of that, and it's even worse for them. They go through even more things, right? And we can attest to you, like I know people at you know even at our workplace or family or whatever, they'd be worried about just some of the most minuscule, just stupid things ever. And they look at people like me and this brother like, man, you're real calm. You're just, you're not worried about that. No, nah, I'm not worried about it. You know, and there's a reason for that because we're in the scriptures and we know. So we go through things, but not like the sinners, like the scripture says sevenfold more. So that's the thing people got to understand. So everyone goes through things. So if you think you're going to leave the Most High and his son, right? Stop from following them or whatever. And then, hey, you're not going to go through things. You're sadly mistaken. Oh, you, you're going to go through things. All right. So let's go from there, bro. To um, if we're going to stay in Ecclesiastes. 
We're going to go to chapter 24 and we're going to read verse 24. And we're going to see what this, what the, what this Please tells us. Go ahead. Please answer 24, 24. Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone, and besides him there is none, no other Savior. So faint not to be strong in the Lord. Let's stay, remain strong in the Lord, man. Right? Strong. Right? If you lack that strength, pray and ask him for it and not give yourselves over to Satan. But faint not to be strong in the Lord that he may confirm you. So when you're doing the things that are right, he's going to confirm that, okay, this is my servant. This person loves me. Cleave unto him for the Lord Almighty is God alone. There's only one God. Satan is not God. The devil is not God. Our so-called spirit guides ourselves. We're not God. There's only one. Right. And besides him, there's no other savior. He sent his only begotten son to be our savior. Right. But they're the only ones that are for us. So faint not to be strong in the Lord, man. Let's stick to the Lord. Let's stick with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let me say this real quick, too, before we move on, because like even if you go back to the, the, like the Psalms and all the things that David went through and we know and understand a lot of things that David went through. It was because of his own doings, but he didn't give up. He stayed strong in the Lord. He went through a lot. He went through hell and back. It was even times that he thought the Lord was just done dealing with him. But we got to know and understand a lot of these hard times and hardships we go through is because of sin and things that we have brought upon ourselves. And then sometimes you have people say, well, I really did to it. A lot of times it'd be the enemy just coming against you to break you that's what you got to know and understand satan is going to continue to apply pressure 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 he's going to i mean from the moment that you open your eyes until you go to sleep the enemy try to apply pressure 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 that's why we got to stay strong as you said in the lord and we got to fight this spiritual battle in prayer you got to get you a prayer life going and I'm not just talking about before you lay your head down and go to sleep. This is a constant thing that we have to learn how to pray and fight our enemy in the spirit and break the things and, and cast down the works of the enemy in the spirit that he got planned against us. Ask the Lord to protect you. Ask the Lord to destroy all the plans of the enemy that he have against you. And when you see the things are not moving in your favor, you got to pray harder. You got to ask the Lord to show you what it is that's causing the hindrance. Because a lot of times it's something that we're doing and the way we carry ourselves could be causing hindrance. And that hindrance is, is a, still a doorway that the enemy is operating in our life. It's, it's always the enemy. And I always say Satan is about me, his legality, having legal ground. If he have a purpose or a reason to be there, he ain't leaving until you close and seal up those doors that he's getting in through. That's why we got to go through everything with a fine tooth comb and ask, and ask continuously for the Lord's mercy. Well, his mercy is there, but we got to know and understand it is there and not get faint-hearted and give up. And I yield with that, bro. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the book of James chapter four and we're going to read verse five. right? And we're going to continue on the instructions here and we're going to see. So we're going to read um, James chapter four. We're going to read five through verse seven. Right. And we're going to see what this says, because the scriptures tells us everything. Right. So let's see. James four and five says, do ye think that the scripture said in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusted to envy. So do we think the scripture says this for nothing? The spirit that man have in us, it lusteth to envy. So the, the spirit that we have, we would rather do all the wicked stuff that God tells us not to do. Smoke weed, have all the sex we want, eat all the damn time, eat whatever we want to eat. 
that's our spirit that's our makeup and that's lust and envy so once we get a hold of the true knowledge of how god told us how to live that spirit there is it's envious it wants to combat it the right spirit and do what the hell it wants to do that's our makeup but read verse six let's see what this says verse six but he gave it more grace wherefore he said god resisted the proud but give it grace unto the humble so he gives more grace because the lord knows our makeup man he knows what we're made of he knows how we are right he says it in the very beginning that man's imagination is evil from his youth but he gives more grace wherefore he says god resisteth the problem giveth grace unto the humble so in that first video that i played where the guy's talking all this stuff that's called pride that's what satan did as a matter of fact when he was up in the heavens before mankind was even created that pride where he thought he knew more than the most i wanted to take over the most High's position that's a prideful spirit we don't know a damn thing we're flesh and blood we're just we're we're not even on this earth for long that's called pride that's why we have to humble down to what the the creator how he created us and what he told us to do because we're always going to be wrong so he giveth more grace wherever he said god resisted the problem give us grace to the humble read verse seven verse seven they submit yourself therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so submit yourselves therefore to god right do the things that the most high god is requiring us to do because he's the one that made us it's not a big bang we didn't make ourselves none of that so submit yourselves to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so the devil is going to come with all kinds of stuff in our minds and our thoughts tell us things against the most high and I, we all go through i go through that right but we have to resist him and say you know what no that's not true he's the evil one right and not the most high god because he's trying to pull us away from the most high god so we got to resist that all right um let's go to uh first peter chapter 5 and we're going to read um 8 through 11 and let's see what this says <clears throat> first peter 5 and 8 says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour so it says be sober be clear-minded be vigilant be on the lookout because our adversary not our friend but our adversary the devil as a roaring lion right so when a lion is roaring the lion is hungry and wants to devour a prey that's what satan is he's our enemy and he wants to devour us right especially the ones that have said you know what to hell with you satan i'm not doing any of that wicked stuff and i'm trying to follow the most high and his son christ He's walking around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Right? Read verse 9. Who resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So the letter was, this letter was being written here telling the Israelites, look, resist them, stay steadfast in the faith of Christ, knowing that the very same afflictions people um other people are going through it as well just like what we read in the ecclesiasticus right everybody goes through stuff so stay strong it's not just you so even with those two ex those two videos and people were saying yeah i agree i agree everybody's going through something man right everybody is going through something that's why even if you're struggling and all that i know even with me some of the stuff that has helped me when i look at those um uh testimonial videos i'll be like damn i'm like man these people are they went through a lot you know mm -hmm. my life i didn't go through half half the stuff that they went through and they came out on top strong right and that helps me quite a bit that strengthens me right so even talking to other um people right talking to other brothers and sisters right 
just sharing experiences and things like that, those are the things that strengthen you, right? But when you go into your own mind, oh, no, I can't do this. I can't. No, look, there's, everybody has access to YouTube and all that. Just go on there and look, man. There are people that's going through a whole lot worse than you or have been through a whole lot worse than you. But everybody's going through something. Even your brethren that are in the world, like it says. Right? Read verse 10. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, whom have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, Make you perfect, establish, strengthen it, settle you. Read 11. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. All right. So, okay. So it says, but the God of all grace, right? So the God of all grace. So it's the most high God and his grace while we're even still alive. Right. Why people can curse him out and say all kinds of evil blasphemous things. And he still allows them to live. That's called grace because he's given the person a chance to repent and to get it right. He's given us all a chance to repent and get it right. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, it says, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you, right? So when we go through the different trials and tribulations that we go through, it says we're suffering for a while, but it's going to make us perfect. Is going to establish us and strengthen us and settle us, right? Because when we go through things, it only strengthens us and we become that much stronger to other things, right? And this is something, again, that I have to keep telling myself or other people have to keep reminding me, right? But that's why the scriptures are here and that's why, you know, um, that fellowship and all that, all that stuff is important also, you know, and just talking to other like-minded individuals, right? All that is important. And it says to him be the glory forever and ever. So we shouldn't be doing videos where we're blaspheming God and cursing him out and all that. No, to God be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. He's the one that made the world and all of us that are in it. All right. So. All right. Did you want to um, say anything before we move on? No, I'm good, bro. All right, I'm trying to see what I want to do here because I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to go over to um, see something. Uh, should be seven minutes. Uh, all right, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm going to play the last part of this video here, and then I'm gonna close out with one other scripture, and then we'll just end it. But I just want to, you know, show people just the. The things that are happening, um, you know, with people and, and stuff like that, the craziness, right? So let me um, let me just go back through here. And this will be the last part of it. And then I'll close out. But this, uh, keep in mind everything also that we talked about, about the studying for yourself and context, so on and so forth, right? Because if you don't do that, then this can happen, this second part here that I'm going to play. So let's see. Okay, let me make sure I'm following. Colonizers told us that we were to pray to the same God that they prayed to. Keep in mind while they told us to pray to this God, they never really believed that this God was our God and that we could really be a Christian. Keep that in mind. But when you look at the so-called loving idea called God or Yahweh, you do not find love. Let's look at his plan. So he put in the midst of the garden a tree of knowledge of good and evil, which means that they didn't know good or evil before partaking of the fruit. You know this is so because the God of the Bible said that he put cherubims and all that crap to protect the tree of life, lest they should eat from that tree and live forever. Now that's important because that means, or we can infer that, they were not going to live forever unless they took from that tree of life. Well, let's forget that right now. Let's look at your God's proposition. I was born in sin. I was shaping iniquity. That means it was not my fault. And you try to say that it was Adam's fault or the fault of our fathers, then that makes your God a liar because he said he would not visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children anymore. 
So your God is not supposed to practice punishing you today for something that was done yesteryear. And what makes him more maniacal is that it wasn't even you that committed the offense. This was done allegedly in Adam, a total fictional character. So I must believe that I am nothing, more than nothing. I'm worthy of death simply because I was born. Well, Christians, if your God is the creator of everything, then who created me? Who created these circumstances? The Bible says it's your God's will that should stand or shall stand. Who shall be able to resist his will? Who? So was his will to hide from you? It seems like this God is no different from the tooth fairy in that we don't see this God outside of our imagination. Like in real life, no God. Only inferences, speculation, guessing, but no God. Just a book that's full of lies, mysticism, magic, and portrays a bloodthirsty God that only forgives when blood is shed. A loving God where? The only reasons why you Christians say he's a loving God is because you say he tortured and killed his only son for me. Oh, he's such a loving God. Oh yeah? God of love, huh? What about Adam and Eve in the story? Any child who can read and comprehend will not get love out that story. Never heard it? Wanna hear it? Here you go. This wise, all wise, all powerful God came up with this brilliant plan. Now, the first time he screwed up, he had to kill everybody, flood the world, and start over again. I know, I know, don't trip, he's still all knowing. So he takes these humans, put them in his garden, then puts this tree of knowledge of good and evil there. And it says, you eat from any other tree, but don't eat from the tree that's in the middle of the garden. If you do, you're going to die. In the day thereof, they should eat, you're going to die. A maniacal God. You know, I as a father would not have set my children up to fail like that. Already positioned to kill them. But you ever consider the fact that they did not know the difference between good and evil? They didn't know. So they partake of this fruit that he says do not partake of. But they didn't know. And it was the serpent that told them the truth. Because in the day that they did eat, they did not die. And that's what the serpent said. The God of the Bible said you would die in that day. The serpent said, no, you won't. He knows if you eat, you're going to become like him, knowing good and evil. So in the story, that's exactly what happened. Now, who told the truth again? Cognitive dissonance sets in. Then the Christians start with a lion. No, it just means they were spiritually dead. He didn't mean that in that day. <laughs> Sorry, that's what it says. <laughs> Loving God, huh? Let's keep it going. There were some kids out playing, you know, they saw another kid. The kid had a bald head. You know how kids do, right? So the loving God of the Bible decided, whoa, oh, you want to laugh at the bald head of a prophet? Sent beasts from the woods to rip them apart alive. Loving God, right? Let me keep going. Oh, we can see the love of this God exemplified in Exodus. Jesus loved the little children, all the little children of the world. But is this true? Because the God of the Bible had this habit of unaliving them through many different means, like drowning, eaten by beast, disease. Oh, yeah, Yahweh know how to get rid of folk. Let's keep going. The Bible says that your God hardened Pharaoh's heart that he might not let the people go. That he told Moses, he ain't going to let him go because I hardened his heart. But watch this. I'm going to get some glory out of him. So you think that it's just that your God controls Pharaoh like a puppet and then punishes him for doing what he controlled and commanded him to do. Oh, loving God. Oh, I ain't finished. He's so loving that if a woman is essayed or R-A-P and you know the rest, your old loving God made a way for her to marry her. You know who? Who did that to her? Loving God, right? Let's keep it going. He loves his children so much that do and does what he says that he unalives their children. Yeah, that's right. The God of the Bible gets a kick out of unaliving his children's children, like Job. Everything that he said, it's all accusatory. It's all accusatory. It's all God did this. God is evil. God is wrong. Why did you do this? God, you don't make any sense. Therefore, you are not who you say you are. Therefore, why should I believe in a lie? It's all accusatory. None of it is self-reflective.
It's all looking at God and accusing God of doing things without understanding the context in those situations and the decision-making that went into those stories. Exactly. And that's where I wanted to, uh, to end that video, right? Because exactly what he said is, is on point is very accusatory, right? And then not looking at the Bible in context, right? So I don't know if he's just listening to a man or whatever, teaching these things or looking at it because he's got certain lust in his mind, whatever he wants to fulfill. Right. But these are the things that people got to be real careful of, man, what, what, you know, what they're doing and how they're viewing the scriptures, viewing the most I view in Christ. Right. Um, let's go here, bro. Let's go to the book of Revelations, chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 10 through verse 12. This is the warning. Revelations 12. And you said 10 through 12? Yes. Uh -huh. Revelations 10 and 12 and 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuses them before our God day and night. All right. So stop right there. Now it says, and I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now is salvation come the kingdom of God and the power of Christ for the accuser of our brethren, which is the devil is come down, right? Is cast down, right? Read verse 11. Verse 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Okay, so it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So by the blood of Christ, Christ shed in his blood for our sins. And by the word of their testimony, right? And they love not their lives unto the very death. So their testimony, meaning they came out of the world, came out of the filth, the wickedness, the lust, and all that transform their lives and start living like christ right and that's how those people that are that are saved are going to be able to overcome and they love not their lives unto the death unto the death right so they weren't a part of this world and they went through things they went through suffering but this life that we're living is temporal and what's to come is eternal and the ones that are truly in christ know that and live just like that right or read verse 12. Verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice, ye heaveners, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So this is the point. It says, Rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil is come down unto you and having great wrath because he knows he has a short time, right? So when you see people giving themselves over to these different thoughts and feelings and cursing God out and saying this and saying that, those things is off the devil. And Nick went on to actually say that too in the video, right? But these things are off the devil, Right. These are demonic spirits that are on people that this is the devil getting people to stop from worshiping and serving God. Right. And then not only that, going going on the airways and spewing their madness and getting people to listen to them and follow them. These are this is the work of the devil. Right. So these are the things that we got to be careful of and just be mindful of. And look, we encourage people, please share the video, man, share these videos um like it please so that can help help out the algorithm so that the word can spread because it's again it's things like this that's been happening quite a bit where a lot of people are falling into this trap right so did you want to say anything bro in closing real quick and, <clears throat> i'm sorry and real quick in closing like understanding no people it's a lot but like even this scripture we just read about how the devil came down from heaven. He knew it, but he had a short time. 
even when you go back, everything that's playing out and going on in this world is the most highest perfect plan to actually to destroy the devil. Because remember, before the devil fell, man was not even created. And everything that goes into the punishment in the end in the lake of fire, this is all because of the devil. The great war that was in heaven before man was ever even created. Everything that going, it's a lot of stuff that, yes, brothers and sisters, we, we don't understand. But don't allow your misunderstanding of God's purpose and God's way to cause you to begin to attack God. If you don't understand, it's been many things that I didn't understand, but I didn't give up and I didn't look at God like he was evil. I sat back and I, I can constantly endure like we read in the scriptures. And then the Lord began to show me things, show me that this is why that, this is why that. And there's still a lot of things to this day that I don't understand about the Bible. But I know that the Heavenly Father is real because I, I have been shown. And I done been through a lot of different things, especially when it comes to spiritual things in this spiritual world. But be very careful because like even everything that this guy's saying, if you're unlearned, it can cause you to fall because you will begin to question God. Well, God, why did you do this? And why did you do that? And what is this about? And what is that about? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? But in time, you got to continue to grow in the spirit. It's just like a child growing up. They want to associate itself in the affairs of adults. And they don't understand and know because they, they're not growing or not to that level. But in their heart, they feel that they know and understand. It's, it always use that analogy about how, what if your child just start coming against you? And just sort of talking all crazy to you in your house and saying, why do you do this? Why do you wake up in the morning and go to work? And why do you, you're always gone and you, you send me to this school and you do this. And I don't understand why I, I got to do this. And I don't understand that. It's all the ignorance of an unlearned child. And that's what happened to us a lot. We unlearn and we're ignorant and then we fall. And I hear with that, bro. Exactly. Very good, man. And definitely all, all, all true and all good points, man. So, you know, just take heed to these things. Like the brother just said, if you're unlearned, what this, what he said can throw you off. And that's why I started out with what I started out as far as, um, you know, studying for yourself, you know, um, to see what the scripture says, right? Study for yourself. See what the scripture says. Don't go by what other people are telling you, right? So again, we hope the word was edifying. Please, we encourage you. Please, please, please share this video, man. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that are falling into this trap, man. Share the video, like it, put some kind of comment, something to help out the algorithm. But please, okay? With that, we say.